This episode of Geeping is brought to you by HipChat Plus. I am audio and video chatting and share your screen and files all in one application. Hey gang, it's John P. We're wandering around Detroit at the International Auto Show. Let's go take a look at some of the highlights. Welcome to Geek Beat. This year's auto show actually got me more excited than any in the past, and there were a ton of new vehicle introductions, so I found way more to share than I should probably be trying to cram into a single episode, but let's do it anyway. And now to the Acura booth for one of the most anticipated releases of the show, the NSX. Some of you know that I used to own an NSX, so that makes me the prime target for a fresh new one but I'm strangely not in love with this very sweet piece of technology. The new NSX will sport a twin turbo, six cylinder engine, three electric motors, and a nine speed dual clutch transmission. 550 horses on tap should give it plenty of go, but the $150,000 price tag is gonna give it stiff competition. I'm here at the Ford booth, and by the way, thanks to my friends over at Ford for bringing me out to the Detroit Auto Show. That was super awesome of you guys. Also super awesome, some of the new things that Ford announced today. They brought out a brand new Raptor, the new GT, and a super sweet Mustang. Ford's new Mustang GT350 is a super sweet ride for anyone with a lead foot who doesn't happen to have 100 Gs to plop down on a car and who doesn't happen to care about air conditioning. It's got a 5.2 liter V8 making around 500 horsepower and 400 pounds feet of torque, made into a six speed manual transmission, carbon fiber wheels, and no rear seat or air conditioning because you wanna go fast. Not fast enough, in 2016, they'll start building the new 2017 GT, a mid-engine monster that looks good enough you'd swear Bradley Cooper and Halle Berry had a baby. A baby with 600 horsepower that'll probably do zero to 60 in three seconds on its way to over 200 miles an hour. And the Raptor? Oh, we'll get to the trucks in a minute. If you want to haul four people around in style post haste, look no further than the 2016 ATS V. Packing 455 horsepower and 445 pound feet of torque from the twin turbocharged V6, it'll hit 60 in 3.9 seconds with a top speed over 185 miles an hour. Tesla's been on a roll for a while, but at the show here, they are showing off the new P85D. It is a two motor, 691 horsepower machine with 270 miles of charge. It's pretty good looking. They claim it'll do zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. And that is a zero emission vehicle, folks. Lots of love. Big news on the plug-in and electric front from Chevy this year. Updates to the new Volt. And you've heard of the Volt, but how about the Bolt? Callie and I spent a lot of time with the Volt in the past and we loved it, but the new Volt has even more to love. They've upped the battery range to over 50 miles and also tweaked the styling to make it an even better looking ride. But GM's battery lab clearly isn't content with a plug-in hybrid and they're looking to displace pure electrics like the Nissan Leaf with the introduction of the new Chevy Bolt. It's a concept at the moment, but it actually looks pretty darn good. And if they can manage 200 miles of range out of this thing and keep the price under 30K, which is their target, I think they'll sell a ton of them. The 2016 Cascada Convertible is a real car already sold in Europe under the Opel brand. It's 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder, makes 200 horsepower, and the convertible top can be raised or lowered in 17 seconds, even with the car in motion up to 31 miles an hour. On the other end of the spectrum, Buick's showing off the Avenir concept. Its V6 engine features cylinder deactivation, auto start stop, a nine speed transmission with paddle shifters, all wheel drive, driver selectable suspension dampening, and 21 inch wheels. We'll have to wait to see if it ever actually makes it to the market. Toyota is one of several manufacturers at the show demoing hydrogen fuel vehicles, but the Mirai looks the closest to reality. I especially like the little demonstrator they had to show how a refueling pump part works. It kind of looks like a regular gas pump, but it has a sort of quick connector that couples to the car and presumably unleashes the hydrogen. Speaking of concept vehicles, fans of the old Toyota Supra are surely hoping the FT1 makes its way to local dealers. The FT1 for future Toyota One is just a design concept, 
But what's remarkable is that this could become the basis of a car in the $60,000 price range. If they manage to pull it off, it will be truly impressive. Great, Scott. I spent this whole time talking about cars, but don't worry, we're gonna get to the trucks right after Callie tells you all about Hip Chat. While John has been roaming the floor at the auto show having fun, he's been using Hip Chat to share photos and videos of his experiences with all of us back here at the studio and making us jealous. When text conversations get tedious, we can jump on a video call to discuss stuff, all within the same app. It's easy and efficient, and you can get it on your computer or your mobile device. Try Hip Chat Plus free, no credit card required. Hipchat.com slash geekbeat. Sign up, click on start chatting, invite a few team members, try it free for 30 days, and if you're in the first hundred people to sign up, then you're going to get 90 days free instead of just 30. How awesome is that? Just a few weeks ago, I gave you a first look at Ford's new F-150, and for some reason, it didn't hit me that there'd be a new Raptor to go with it. But when Ford rolled out the updated design, I loved it. They tell me it'll be powered by an all-new high-output 3.5-liter EcoBoost that makes more horsepower than the outgoing V8. Plus, they've shaved 500 pounds off the truck with the new aluminum frame, meaning the Raptor should be the fastest way to get from point A to point B. Pick any two points. The Colorado is a mid-sized truck that looks good, but they don't normally look like this concept. It has massive wheels and off-road tires, a mount for the spare in the back, and orange all over it, including the gorgeous integrated winch in the front bumper. I wouldn't say the Titan has really been updated that much. It still looks kind of like the outgoing model, and the interior has seen minor updates and improvements. I'm not sure if it's a testament to how well it's worked in the past or just a lack of imagination. The biggest change is in the introduction of the XD model with a 5 liter Cummins diesel making 310 horsepower and 555 pounds feet of torque. That brings the Titan's towing capacity up to about 12,000 pounds. There's one thing that almost every car in the show has in common. They're all made on assembly lines. I say almost because Local Motors here behind me wants to do it a different way. They are 3D printing and milling a car. The first step in the process uses a giant 3D printer to extrude a special plastic carbon recipe into a solid chassis. Next, an industrial sized milling machine smooths out the rough body and finally it gets polished and painted to perfection. If they can speed up the process, maybe one day mass customization will be possible and everyone will be driving around in their own unique cars. I was going to say, well, that's it for this year's auto show, but that's a lot for this year's auto show. We've seen cars, we've seen trucks, we've seen 3D printed cars, make your own. Ah, my head's still spinning, so don't ask me what my favorite thing was just yet. But tell me what yours was. Tweet me at John Pose or leave a comment below. Anyway, that's it for this year's uh, auto show. That's it for this episode of Geek Beat. Thumbs up on YouTube, guys. I'll see you later. 2015 Ford F-150. Let's take a look. Welcome to Geek Bee. Navigation and control system that is powered by NVIDIA. Okay, guys, we are sitting inside the cockpit of the new BMW i8. This is a gas electric hybrid. 